So why put rain gutters on a high tunnel? Well, we find that when the rainwater rolls off the roof of a high tunnel, you frequently get wetness problems along the edge of the tunnel, that seep back into the tunnel, there are erosion problems, all kinds of problems with that extra water. Besides that, uh, you can harvest that rainwater and use it back in the tunnel. And in studies, we've found that you can get a significant portion, maybe more than half of the water needs for the crop in the tunnel served by that rainwater. So we did a rainwater collection system on a high tunnel we had at one of our research farms. I'd like to show you how we installed that system. The system is comprised of three parts. Basically, we have the gutters to collect the water off the roof. We have storage tanks to hold that water until we can use it. And then a pumping system to reuse the rainwater inside the tunnel. Mounting the gutters onto a Quonset-shaped high tunnel means we're mounting on curved sides. In order to get the gutters closer to level, we needed angled mounting boards. We ripped 2x4 planks lengthwise at an angle so that we could have a beveled mounting board to mount to the side of this curved arch frame on our Quonset-type high tunnel. The beveled mounting boards were attached to the high tunnel frames underneath the tarp on the inside of the high tunnel. We used simple conduit or plumbing type straps to attach the angled mounting boards to the tunnel frames using short construction screws to attach the clamps to the board. A string line stretched from one end of the high tunnel to the other gave us a line to follow in mounting the boards on the tunnel frames. The string line had to be pulled out a little bit so it would clear all the frames as it went from one end of the tunnel to the other. And we set the string line at the slope that we wanted the gutters to follow in the end, about six inches of drop from one end of the tunnel to the other. This guide allowed us to align the mounting boards. Vinyl gutter brackets were then attached to the mounting board from outside, screwing right through the tarp of the high tunnel into the mounting board. The gutter sections are connected with gasketed slip joints. These joints must be located in the proper spot for the sections to come together. Measure that distance and locate the slip joints, allowing for the expansion and contraction of the vinyl gutters. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the gap that you allow. A string line on the outside of the tunnel helped us to align the bottom of the mounting brackets and the splice brackets as we mounted the brackets to the wooden mounting board. Once in place, following the string line, the gutter brackets formed a nice uniform slope from one end of the high tunnel to the other. We recommend six to eight inches of slope in 100 feet of gutter on a high tunnel. Vinyl gutter sections are inserted into the gutter brackets, and the brackets are clipped over the top of the gutter to hold it in place. This type of system makes it easy to remove the gutter sections. For example, in the wintertime in our climate, we'd like to pull the gutter sections off so that ice and snow sliding off the roof of the tunnel don't tear up our gutter. Here's the finished gutter in place with six to eight inches of slope from one end of the high tunnel to the other. You can see it's not a straight line uh, looking down the edge of the tunnel because the frames aren't that perfectly uniform, but we do have a nice uniform slope from one end to the other. An end cap is placed on the high end of the gutter. This cap has a gasket built into the cap. It's simply snapped over the end of the gutter and ready to go. On our high tunnel, there were straps over the top to help control wind billowing of the uh, roof of the high tunnel. We made sure to install the gutter sections underneath those roof straps so that they didn't interfere with the installation of the gutters. When installing the gutter sections, make sure to leave the recommended gap between the gutter sections as you install them into the slip joints. To get rainwater off of the roof and into the gutter, we needed a flap attached to the tunnel roof. This flap was just a piece of roofing material that we attached to the tunnel to get the water off of the tunnel roof and inside the gutters. The rain flap can be attached under the wiggle wire on the hip board, or we found it easier to simply tape a short flap to the tunnel roof using roof repair tape. 
When taping the rain flap to the tunnel roof, you may have to work around the brace ropes that hold the roll-up sides on the tunnel in place. Cutting the tape around these ropes may help to avoid leaks that you would get from water running behind the ropes and the tape. Wind may blow the rain flap around on the side of the high tunnel. It may be necessary to weight the bottom edge of the flap to hold it in place. Many types of weights may work on the bottom edge of the rain flap. In this case, we found that a number nine wire threaded through holes punched in the bottom edge of the flap held it down inside the gutter. We also tried fishing weights, and any other type of weight that you can attach to the bottom edge of the flap might work. The second part of the system includes tanks for storing the rainwater. Because our system has two water tanks, we had to make sure that the water tanks were at the same level so we could connect the two tanks together and not have one tank flowing over into the other tank and overflowing the top of one of the two tanks. So the first thing we had to do in setting those tanks was to make sure the pads were at approximately the same level for the two tanks. Providing a smooth surface for the tanks to sit on was important for support. You could use fill sand, you could use fine crushed rock. In our case, we used limestone screenings, which are even finer than road rock. They were easy to pour out on the pad and smooth off with a plank just to get a nice level surface. Once our pads were in place, we put the tanks on the pads, making sure that we aligned the tank with the line that the gutter would form as it came off the end of the high tunnel. It's important to use clean water tanks for rainwater capture because this water is going to be used on the crops inside. We did not want to have old tanks that had been used for pesticide storage or transport. The gutter directs rainwater from the high tunnel to the storage tank at the end of the building. A drop from the gutter fills the tank. To avoid overfilling the tank, a ball valve made from a toy inflatable ball rises to seal off the gutter drop. As the ball floats up, it seals against a sewer adapter on the end of the gutter drop. Extra rainwater bypasses the full tank to an overflow downspout and away from the high tunnel. A wire basket holds the ball in place inside the tank and keeps it positioned just below the gutter drop. A flexible water line brings rainwater from the tank into the high tunnel. Our two tanks are connected to the pump using a Y valve so we can draw from either or both tanks. A 200 mesh filter protects the pumps and the drip irrigation system. Because collected rainwater contains bacteria, Use it only for drip irrigation and never on the surface of produce or for any other use. We used electric diaphragm pumps to send the water from our storage tanks to our drip irrigation system. Pumps can be run with AC line power or with solar panels. Solar panels could be rigid and mounted on a mounting board, or they could be flexible panels, as seen here, attached directly to the roof of the high tunnel. In a solar system, a deep cycle storage battery stores power from the solar panel for the system. A solar charge controller maintains the battery at proper charge level and prevents overcharging or bleeding of power. The battery then stores the power and runs a DC diaphragm pump. In our system, we have switches to operate either an AC pump or a DC pump to send water to the irrigation system. The pumping system feeds pressurized rainwater through a pressure regulator and to the drip irrigation system. A companion publication titled Rainwater Catchment for a High Tunnel for Irrigation Use is available from the ISU Extension online store. The publication number is PM3017 and it's available at this address.